I welcome you back to this online series on aerodynamics. So today we are going to discuss about the different types of flows that is the rotational and irrotational flows and how it can be used, how we can uh, derive equations for vorticity, circulation, few important terms in aerodynamics we are going to derive today. So let's begin. Let's try to understand a new term called as stream function, right? All of us know what a streamline is. Now a function which defines that line, that streamline is called as stream function, right? Let's consider a 2D steady flow for which uh, the equation for streamline is given by dy by dx is equal to v by u. Let's call this as equation number 5. This particular equation gives the equation of a streamline, right? So if I know the values of u and v, I can simply write the above expression in terms of a function f, which depends on x and y, is equal to a constant value, right? C. Now if I replace this f with psi, that is called as stream function, right? So psi of x comma y is equal to c. Let's call this as equation number 6. So for time being, I will write it as psi bar and we'll try to understand what the psi bar is, right? So let's call this psi bar as the stream function, right? Both psi and psi bar are stream functions. In the later, in this lecture, we will try to understand what is the difference between them. So for time being, let's assume that it is psi bar, right? So in order to understand better what a stream function is, let's define two streamlines, AB and CD. The streamline AB is given by psi bar is equal to C1, that is the stream function. And the streamline CD is given by psi bar is equal to C2. So these two are the equations of streamline, right? And I join this streamline with this dotted line and that distance between these two streamlines is represented by del n and the velocity vector which is uh, perpendicular to del n is given by v right now the difference del psi that is the difference of streamlines a b and c d is represented by del psi bar that represents the mass flow between the streamlines right let's understand how it uh, does that so del psi bar is nothing but c2 minus c1. Let's call this as equation number 7. Assuming the streamlines are close together, such that the flow uh, velocity distribution is uniform between these streamlines and for unit depth, right? So let's assume that for this presentation, the depth is uh, unity perpendicular to the uh, your monitor or your mobile screen, right? So for that, the del psi bar is nothing but density multiplied by velocity into the area. Del n into 1 is nothing but the cross-sectional area through which the flow is flowing. Getting the point? So this product is nothing but the mass flow rate. So if you can recall, the mass flow rate is given by the product rho into a into v. Right? As the conti continuity equation tells, rho AV is equal to constant, right? So rho into area is del n into 1, where the 1 is the unit depth and V is the velocity. Then let's try to understand what this mass flow rate is. So please uh, understand this particular diagram. V is the velocity vector in the direction of streamline. And this I'm going to represent in in terms of u and v, that is the velocities in x direction and v y direction separately. Then del n also I am going to write it as del x and del y, where del x is the area across 
y direction and del y is the area across x direction understood so if i uh, understand this carefully the mass flow rate entering the cross section m is the same as the mass flow rate leaving the cross section del x and the cross section del y right so very simple so i have two streamlines i have joined these two streamlines with a perpendicular line and that uh, distance is del n of unit depth so the net cross sectional area becomes del n uh, meter square if it is in si unit and the velocities i have uh, converted into the velocity in x direction and the velocity in y direction similarly the cross sectional area del n i have replicated as the del x and del y so what this mass flow rate gives that is del psi bar gives is i replace del n with rho u into del y plus rho v into minus del x so regarding the sign convention the mass flow always uh, moving towards the system is positive out of the system is negative so i put negative sign with del x so finally i am going to get the equation for mass flow rate as rho u into dy minus rho v into dx let's call this as equation number 8a so since psi bar is also a function of x and y using the chain rule to calculate the states i can write d psi bar as do psi bar by do x into dx that is the variation of stream function in x direction for how much distance for del x distance plus the variation of stream function in y direction in del y distance let's call this as equation number 8b so if i compare equation 8a and equation 8b i can comfortably get a relationship between the stream function and the linear velocity am i right see here the first term gives rho into u that is the density of the flow multiplied by the free stream velocity in x direction is equal to the variation of stream function with respect to y right very interesting concept please observe and learn then second term gives the product of density and velocity in y direction is the negative partial differentiation of stream function with respect to x direction right call this as equation 9a now the implication of this equation 9a is if i know the stream function of any particular flow i can get the velocities in x and y direction that is the application of stream function now in the first stage why we need stream function is because if i know stream function of a particular stream line i can finally get the velocities in x and y directions for that particular stream line so this is the application of a, a stream function understood so the products rho u and rho v represents the mass flow rate per unit area you see mass flow rate is nothing but density multiplied by cross sectional area multiplied by velocity so here it is the mass flow rate per unit cross sectional area because a is missing from these products so rho u represents the mass flow rate per unit area rho v represents mass flow rate per unit area again in x and y directions respectively clear so please understand up to here if you have not understood again go back and watch the video and once you understand this part then only you please continue now also i can represent the same stream function in cylindrical coordinates see because we are discussing uh, aerodynamics aerodynamics the air molecules doesn't always moves in straight line or inclined line so most of the times the possibility is that the it moves in some curve right so i can better explain the stream functions if i represent those equations in terms of polar coordinates 
right so i can represent the same uh, relationship between the stream function and the velocity vectors in terms of polar coordinates so that i can explain it as density into vr that is velocity in r direction is equal to 1 by r into dou psi by dou theta also rho into v theta is equal to the negative of the partial differentiation of stream function with respect to r let's call this as equation 9b right again uh, the same the product we are going to get we are going to get the mass flow rate per unit area now let's try to understand the units and dimensions associated with the stream function now uh, before moving on let me give you a clear picture on why we are studying this right the idea is once we define stream function and understand stream function i am going to apply these concepts to the real flow problems what do you mean by real flow problems let's say for example uniform flow all of you know what uniform flow is the flow parameters doesn't change with respect to time so that is uniform flow so for this flow if i want to understand what is the velocity at that particular point first i should know what is the function of the streamline how streamline is moving if i know the stream function i can easily get what is the velocity at that point so this is just an example of the application of the stream function analysis so still one step we if we move ahead the same application we can extrapolate it for the flow across an airfoil right so that is the final uh, purpose of this particular discussion understood okay so let's try to understand the units and dimensions in the beginning of this lecture i told there is a difference between psi bar and psi so what is the difference let's try to understand see the unit of del psi bar that is the net mass flow rate per unit area is kg per second multiplied by per unit depth now this is the mass flow rate per unit depth which is applicable to both incompressible as well as compressible flows what is incompressible and compressible we have discussed this many times again i am going to repeat an incompressible flow is a flow whose mach number is less than 0.33 and if the mach number is greater than 0.33 that flow is called as compressible flow right although in both the cases air is the medium but we assume that air is incompressible if the mach number is less than 0.33 so if i divide psi bar that is del psi bar by density assuming the flow is incompressible then i am going to divide kg per second per meter by kg per meter cube finally i am going to get meter cube per second per meter which is nothing but the dimension of volumetric flow rate very important please understand just the transformation from psi bar to psi represents the transformation from mass flow rate to volumetric flow rate clear with an additional assumption that the flow is incompressible clear so we have defined the stream function for both uh, compressible and incompressible as well as only for incompressible flows i hope you got the point let's do few observations of the stream function first of all the stream function values at any two points gives the volumetric flow rate if it is psi right if it is psi bar it gives the mass flow rate again very important observation is the usefulness of the stream function is only in finding the velocities in the given direction let's say i want to find out what is the flow velocity in x direction for a given streamline when i say the streamline is given that means the stream function value would be known if i know the value of stream function i can calculate the velocities in x and y directions that is the application of stream functions right so i hope you understood the concepts discussed in this class 
please revise the concepts before moving on to the next lecture thank you very much